Welcome to Raw Online. Today's topic of discussion is maxillary artery, pterygoid venous plexus and maxillary nerve. So the competency of the topic is maxillary artery, maxillary nerve and explain the clinical significance of pterygoid venous plexus. So the maxillary artery, this is the terminal branch of the external carotid artery. So this is the external carotid artery. The external carotid artery has two terminal branches that is the maxillary artery in the infratemporal fossa and another terminal branch is superficial temporal artery. The superficial temporal artery runs in the temporal region that is in the temporal fossa and supplies the structures there. The maxillary artery runs in the infratemporal fossa. So, this is the superficial temporal and this is the maxillary artery. So, it arises near the neck of the mandible that is in the posterior aspect and runs forwards upwards over the lateral pterygoid muscle. Then here it is divided into three parts by the lateral pterygoid muscle. So, the first part is from the point of origin to reach the lower border of lateral pterygoid. The second part is superficial or deep to the lateral pterygoid that is from the lower border of lateral pterygoid to the upper border of lateral pterygoid. So, the first part is from the point of origin to lateral pterygoid, second is within the lateral pterygoid and third part is from the upper border of lateral pterygoid through the pterygo maxillary feature it reaches the pterygo palatine fossa. So, this is the third part. So, the third part is present within the pterygo palatine fossa. So, the first part is otherwise known as mandibular part. The second part is otherwise known as pterygoid part. So, the third part has a course in the pterygo palatine fossa. So, within the pterygo palatine fossa, it is continuous as pino palatine artery. So, the maxillary artery continuous as pino palatine artery. So, the branches of first and second part accompanies the branches of mandibular nerve that is the third branch of the trigeminal ganglion and the branches of third part accompanying the maxillary nerve and the branches of pterygopalatine ganglion and the branches of second part are especially muscular. So, they supply the muscles of mastication. So, they are not passing through any bony foramina. But branches of first and second part passes through many foramina and fissures. So, except the second. So, once again I repeat first and second part accompanying the branches of mandibular nerve, third part accompanying the branches of maxillary nerve and the branches of pterygopalatine ganglion. So, let us see the parts here. So, the three parts. So, the first part is from the point of origin to lower border of lateral pterygoid, second part within the lateral pterygoid and the third part is present in the pterygopalatine fossa. So, let us see the branches from first part. There are five branches from the first part. So, this is the external carotid artery, this is the superficial temporal artery and this is the maxillary artery. So, origin is behind the neck of the mandible. It gives five branches. The first branch is deep auricular branch. Already I have told the first part accompanying the branches of mandibular now. So, this is known as mandibular part and the first part passing through the foraminas. So, the deep auricular artery passes through the external auditory or acoustic meatus and supplies the outer surface of tympanic membrane as well as the external auditory meatus. So, this is the deep auricular artery. So, it passes through the external auditory meatus and supplies the outer surface of tympanic membrane. Then the anterior tympanic artery already we have seen. The anterior tympanic artery is related to the petrotympanic fissure along with the corda tympani now. So, it supplies the inner surface of the tympanic membrane. So, for all branches, remember the name of the branch and which foramina it travels and the area of distribution. The middle meningeal artery is one of the important branch from the first part of the maxillary artery. It passes through the foramen spinosum along with the nervous spinosis which is a branch of mandibular now. So, the middle meningeal artery reaches the middle cranial fossa through the foramen. So, this is the middle meningeal artery. This is the middle meningeal artery which has a deep relation to the lateral pterygoid. It is a ascends upwards and passes through this foramen. So, this is the foramen spinosum and reaches the middle cranial fossa. So, in the middle cranial fossa, it divided into frontal branch and parietal branch. The frontal branches runs over the precentral gyrus. 
it supplies up to the vertex as well as structures present within the middle cranial fossa. Actually, this frontal branch runs deep to the terion, so it makes a bony tunnel deep to the terion. So, in case of any injury over this region leads to the rupture of middle meningeal vessels. The veins are also accompanying the artery. So, the parietal branch runs backwards. So, these two branches make a groove within the skull. So, the parietal branch runs up to the lambdoid suture. So, it supplies the posterior as well as middle cranial fossa. So, this is the one of the important branch from the first part. The accessory middle meningeal artery passing through the foramen ovale along with the mandibular nerve and it supplies the dura as well as the structures present in the middle cranial fossa. So, the inferior alveolar artery is also another important branch. It descends downwards from the inferior border of the lateral pterygoid. It passes through the mandibular foramen. So, it travels through the mandibular canal. Then exits to the mental foramen and gives two terminal branches that is mental branch and incisive branch. So, before entering into the mandibular foramen, it gives two branches that is lingual branch, it accompanies the lingual nerve and mylohyoid branch. This mylohyoid artery runs in the mylohyoid group and accompanies the mylohyoid now. So, in this picture we can see the mylohyoid artery. So, this uh, mainly supplies the lower jaw in this area, chin, incisors as well as molar and premolar areas. So, that is all about the branches from the first part. So, the deep auricular artery, the opening is external auditory meatus, the area of distribution is outer surface of tympanic membrane, anterior tympanic artery, petrotympanic fissure, inferior surface of tympanic membrane, middle meningeal artery, foramen spinosum, frontal branch and parietal branch close related to terium. Accessory meningeal artery, foramen ovale along with mandibular now middle cranial fossa and inferior alveolar artery, mandibular foramen, mental foramen as well as mylohyoid and lingual branches.